Ardo Cal and Jacob Wolf for ESPN Esports, joined by noted FGC and Tetris commentator James Chen. That's right. uh, the Street Fighter <laughs> tournament here at Evo 2019 has concluded mm -hmm. uh, a champion back to Japan. Yeah. Uh, so it was a great tournament. Mm -hmm. We saw a great losers run yeah. by the semifinalists. Yeah. Just give mm -hmm. us your top line thoughts on Evo 2019. Uh, look, uh, coming into EVO 2019, everybody was talking about Punk, you know, and how hot of a streak he was on beforehand. But then, right beforehand, the previous two premiere events were won by Bone Chan, and so now he's kind of the talk at this point. And sure enough, he proved it again, and he was, this is his third premiere event in a row now. So he took CEO, then VS Fighting, and now EVO, which is clearly the biggest one. And you know, it's 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 exciting because, you know, he was in second place long time ago against Luffy, but he finally got his championship here and it feels right to have Bone Chan be a, an Evo champion. <laughs> you know what? I thought a lot of punk uh, and as many did for the last couple of years and mm -hmm. it feels like every Evo we've sort of like hyped him up before yeah. the event. He's had really good streaks. Why why do you think like why has he not been able to play well? Uh, you or know at least, what? you know, finish. He, he did come in second. So. Uh, honestly, it's, I think he puts a lot of pressure on himself. He, uh, although it, you can't tell by the way he is, he's kind of like has this cocky personality and everything like that when you see him in public, yeah. but he really, really wants to win Evo. I know, I, I've talked with him about it. This one means the most to him. And so he probably puts a lot of pressure on himself. And it's funny when, I've even said this to him myself, is when he's carefree, cocky punk, he plays the best. When he's more like, oh, you know, nervous kind of thing, mm -hmm. you know, it, it kind of affects him a little bit. And so- Is it the people? Is it the stage? Uh, I think it's just because he wants it that badly. Because you remember in 2016, I think it was, when he got second place. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry, 2017 when he got yeah. second place. You know, he was in absolute tears yeah, uh, on the really stage. Shook. Yeah, because that's how much it meant to him, you know. And, you know, for me, you know, when I saw him that emotional, that was like, I mean, honestly, it was one of those moments that I saw it and I really respected him so much for it because I could see how much it meant to him at that point in time. And it was just, you know, it, it, I would love to see him. I mean, he's young enough that he's got a few more years. To, he's got plenty of time to keep trying. And, you know, Tokido took a while, Bone Chan took a while, and, you know, they failed a couple of times and made it here. So I think, uh, you know, every, I think Punk has plenty of time, and I wouldn't be surprised if he got that sometime very soon. So let's focus on Bon Chan for yeah. a little bit. I mean, he had some great Korean play mm -hmm. uh, leading into the Grand Finals yeah. and in the Grand Finals itself. Uh, just talk about some of the points that really uh, hit home in terms of him winning this championship. It, it, it's, it's, it's cool because, like I said, he's always been such a strong player. I remember in Street Fighter IV, he was always considered one of the best players. And uh, that year that he got second place to Luffy, everyone had him picked as the guy to win that tournament. He was coming in hot. And so when it didn't happen, it was kind of a shock at the time. Um, and, you know, for a while in Street Fighter uh, V, you know, he started with Nash. And mm -hmm. uh, Nash got nerfed really badly in Season 2. And Bone Chan kind of started disappearing a little bit because he, ke he kept playing uh, Nash and it just wasn't really what he was known as the last Nash for the longest of time <laughs> and um, eventually you know uh, he started picking up Karen a little bit but then when Sagat came out everyone's like oh well, that's what he used in Street Fighter 4 sure. so it was like oh he's but Sagat didn't turn out to be the best of characters he has good matchups and real some really terrible matchups so you have to play multiple characters but you know Karen's obviously really really strong this season and so to see Bone Chan just keep improving and getting stronger with Karen, you know, as the months kept going, even starting since last year and everything. So, you know, it's, for me, like I said, it's, it's super happy for me to see him uh, to take this tournament because, like I said, he's just been such a staple. He was basically trained by Daigo, right? And so to have him, you know, take this is maybe, I don't know, maybe feels kind of like continuing the Daigo legacy. <laughs> did, did it feel like over the years, I mean, he came in second in what, was it 2014? It was where so, he was the runner-up? It's been so it's long. Been it's been so, so long, hard right? for me to remember over the exact years. Years. I guess I, what, I guess what I'm asking is like over the years, was that still a motivating factor for him coming into these tournaments and saying, you know what, I need to win this one? Yeah, probably. I would imagine so because, I, I mean, that's the thing, right? Everybody wants to win Evo, so I think a lot of people kind of have that mindset that it's they, they haven't cemented their 
fighting game career until they win Evo. You know, we saw that a few years ago for Hungrybox when he won Smash Melee, right? And mm -hmm. how overjoyed he was. And he was fell down on the stage and was crying on stage. Made me cry too, but you know, <laughs> Um, I mean, you, you can see it that a lot of people, you know, a lot of people will talk sometimes like, oh, well, you know, Evo is just another term. But then, you know, when they win it, it's just uh, we saw it even with Goichi earlier this weekend. Yeah, that What a moment that was. Yeah. Right? Man, Sonic Fox, they're holding yeah. his arm in the air. Wow. And I saw Goichi like his hands were shaking yeah. and like he had to take his glass out because he's crying. Even in the winter finals, you know, like yeah. fell over yeah. when, when he like and made like, grams. Goichi's the guy who's won everything, right? But, you know, to win Dragon Ball at Evo meant that much to him. In you know? the rematch, too. Yeah, exactly. Oh, my gosh, yeah. So, you know, uh, I, I, it, you know, not to take it away from Bone Cham, but I think everybody, you know, wants to take Evo at some point in time. So I want to ask, your eyes don't seem too red right now. So I'm going to imagine you haven't uh, cried yet. So let's yeah. talk about Goichi yeah. for a few yeah. minutes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I want to ask, what makes Evo so emotional for you? And, and do you expect to hear in the next couple of hours, whether that be during Tekken or, or <laughs> Ultimate, to bridge this breakdown? You know, I, I, look, I, I, I don't want to cry. <laughs> and uh, the, the two years ago when Tokido won, and he said fighting games are something so great, that, that I just <laughs> lost it but the reason why I get so emotional about it is because uh, I've been playing fighting games since Street Fighter 2 yeah. so I've basically been before there was an FGC before there was any internet to even do anything I mean we were downloading combo videos on like real media or whatever yeah, you yeah. Know? <laughs> had to keep them to three megabytes because you know it was took too long to download those things and so you know uh, as a person who has basically kind of said, you know what, I'm going to dedicate my life to this kind of uh, passion and everything like that, part of me also feels kind of worried about it because, you know, you know, esports are still new, right? Fighting game community is still growing and everything like that. And, you know, telling someone to pursue video games at the behest of any other sort of career path or something like that, you know, for me is kind of worrisome. You yeah. know what I mean? And Sometimes as a commentator, as someone trying to talk about fighting games and, well, look how great hype, you know, all the stuff that, you know, I'm almost feeling like I'm luring people into a, you know, like a, like a, a false. Death trap. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly, like a dead end, right? Yeah. But then, you know, just through the past few years, I keep, we just, the FTC keeps getting these great stories of just, you know, for example, Mena RD winning Capcom yeah. Cup. He won, I mean, yeah, Capcom Cup, and he got $250,000, which is, so much money in the Dominican Republic. He was basically able to change the country. And without the FGC, you know, you know, 18, 19 year old kid from the Dominican Republic would have never had this opportunity, yeah. right? Um, you know, same for all the players. There's Sonic Fox, right? I mean, he's, he's literally a gay furry, uh, a black gay furry, and he is one of the most respected and, you know, uh, praised fighting game players in our community and just to be able to give these kind of opportunities to people uh, th even small victories like uh, one of the commentators from uh, Southern California named Ringe mm -hmm. uh, he's been a big NJPW fan a New Japan Pro Wrestling okay. fan yep. forever and a CEO last year not this year but the previous year they had that NJPW uh, tie-in and he got to commentate oh, that that's cool and you know yeah. I asked him about that how that felt and he almost started crying you know like that's that's yeah. just the kind of thing and so two years ago when Tokido said fighting games are something so great Tokido is a genius okay he got into Tokyo University you basically have to be have an, a genius IQ to get into this college he could have done anything he wanted in his life and he would have been successful right and he spent all of it doing fighting games and to win and to have that response and was to him for him to say fighting games are something so great to me meant that yes all the effort that he put into this instead of something else mm -hmm. was worth it and you know like I'm getting choked up right now just even thinking about it you know and like that's what gets me emotional is seeing the success and just the the, the joy that we can bring to certain people you know because of video games, right? I mean, we can even go back to the Tetris thing, right? Yeah, Joseph Saley, right? Just Joseph Saley, 16-year-old kid. Could he have had that kind of an experience in his life without video games no. and kind of stuff like that? And so for me, because fighting games are so near and dear to my heart, that's where my focus is. And anytime I can see anybody in the fighting game community like 
do something great and and just have a, a moment of their life that they would have never had without it you know just gets me all choked up and stuff mm -hmm. <laughs> you know i i spoke to sherry nan and oh, yeah. yesterday uh -huh. about this uh -huh. a little bit about how the fighting game community compared to some others is so mm -hmm. diverse whether yeah. that be a nationality or, or race or mm -hmm. even in gender and you, some of the people you mentioned, they're from all around the yes, world and they yeah, come from uh, all different backgrounds. Uh, Why do you think that's unique to fighting games versus some of the other games that exist in esports? Uh, one of the things that makes fighting games so unique really is the arcade background that they have, right? So one of the reasons why right now, and speaking of Sherry, actually, you know, she's been working on the E-Fight Pass stuff. Mm -hmm. She's the one who got Arslan Ash out here to Evo. Uh, they got him the visa. The thing about it is, I heard the reason why they're so good at Tekken in Pakistan is because a lot of times they just gather at the arcade. And the thing about the arcade that's so important is that, you know, if you go there to the arcade and you're good, for example, you can have hours and hours and hours of entertainment for five bucks, mm -hmm. 10 bucks, yeah. right? It's a very low income kind of uh, way to spend your time. And the reason why it's so international is because everywhere you go on in the world, you know, these arcades became kind of havens for people to gather, you know? So it's just, it's, it, everyone plays everywhere. And, you know, I heard there's like 80 countries over here and, you know, uh, it, it, at Evo this year. Yeah. And so it really is just this universal language. And, and then plus the other thing too is everyone wants to be the best at everything, right? Yeah. Like if you're playing fighting games, you're just like, I just want to be better than all these other people. And it's, and it's quick, it's fast, you go to the arcade, you play, you're in person. And so that also not only breeds the rivalries a little bit because it's this guy that you're facing, yep. you know, but also at the same time, you, you make the best friends. Like yeah. for me, uh, mo a lot of my best friends uh, from college, for example, were the people that I met at the arcade. Right. You right. know, I just went to the UCLA yeah, arcade exactly. every day, and I yeah. skipped classes all the time. But you know, I, know, I became we'll friends. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, I became friends with them, and they're still some of my best friends. You know, right. even like at Southern Hills Golfland. You know, sure. rest in peace, Southern Hills Golfland. You know, uh, <laughs> but like when we would all go there, Vi, Alex Vi, would yeah. be running a 30-game win streak. Everyone's just taking turns losing to him and trying to beat him and everything. And then after the arcade closed, we would all go to Norms, and there'd right. be a, a table of 20 people, and we'd just be sitting there and talking. The, the losing streak reminds me of you playing at the Portland Retro Gaming yeah. Expo, the Street Fighter <laughs> 2 machine. That's right. Last yeah, year, 2018, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Classic Tetris, just playing everybody that yeah. recognized you with uh -huh. your Zangief main in yeah. Street Fighter 2. <laughs> yeah. And everyone's like, how are you so good? It's like, it's James Chen, of course he's good. <laughs> Let me ask you this, just the Street Fighter yeah. scene in general. Uh, Street Fighter did not close out EVO this year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a point of proud pride for the Smash community. Mm -hmm. How does the Street Fighter community feel about that? Um, you know, uh, I'm not sure like how the overall general populace feels. I, a lot of people probably thought it was just going to close it out just naturally because everyone has this weird assumption that like Evo is like very Street Fighter centric. The thing it is, has it's just, been. well, it's it always been. been the biggest game, right? So you just that's it closes out and it always has like the crazy storylines and. You know, uh, outside of Smash, uh, especially Melee as well, uh, I feel like the players are most well known in Street Fighter. But uh, I mean, this year, for me personally, I mean, obviously, you know, closing out Evo on commentary is a, is a cool thing. But, you know, honestly, I have no qualms about it this year because Smash had 3,500 people in there. You know, it's the biggest event that sure. they came out to play and they absolutely deserve to close the tournament. So do you think that, like, let's say we get to next year mm -hmm. and the 2020 EVO Championships, mm -hmm. again, Street Fighter doesn't close out and mm -hmm. it starts to become a pattern. Would, at that point, do you think that's going to be a sore point for the Street Fighter community? Uh, I mean, if, if, if it does, I mean, I'll, I'll yell at them, you know, I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll, go, I'll go on Twitter and be like, hey, look, you know, they have more players. This game is super hype, you know. Everybody wants to have the, the, the prime spot, the closeout spot and stuff like that. But, you know, one of the nice things about the FGC is that we aren't one game, is that we are multiple games, you know what I mean? And I love that about the FGC that, you know, any given year, you know, it's one game or the other. Like, for example, Under Night in Birth this year, mm -hmm. right, was the community game that could. It was always the side tournament and then just grew. And Evo was like, you know what, let's reward this community because they keep growing at every event. Let's put into Evo and then it just had over a thousand players. And it's like ridiculous, you know. And so, you know, for me, 
as even though I'm a Street Fighter commentator and I love Street Fighter and everything, I like seeing all the fighting games succeed. And uh, like I said, if anybody's mad about that, then you know I'll be there to just be like, you know, like don't be mad about it, dude. Like you know, Street Fighter Five is like six years, five years old now. You know, sure. so may, when, hope maybe if Street Fighter Six comes out and like really reinvigorates Street Fighter, we'll get back there. But in the meantime, you know, it's fine to let other games have the have the highlight every once in a while. In sort of what it seems like a little bit of a uh, a decline in Street Fighter Five interest, mm -hmm. there's been a very increase in Tekken Seven interest, yeah. and and it's not like Tekken's a new series. It's been historically uh -huh. at Evo for many many years. Uh -huh. What do you think about that? Why do you why do you think that Tekken, <laughs> specifically in the past six to eight months, has just been on the on the up? Uh, I could talk about this for hours. Like, this is <laughs> this is something I could talk about Good. for hours. But uh, the the best way for me to sum it up so that I don't you know talk for hours <laughs> is uh, the Tekken community, uh, not the Tekken community, the Tekken developers, Harada, Michael Murray, all these guys who are working on Tekken, they have done such an amazing job with this game in so many different ways, right? Not only just like the guest characters and putting the guest characters so that they feel like the, the characters from where they came from, mm. right? Like Akuma feels like Akuma, Geese feels like Geese. They even put their game systems with them and everything. You know, they've been having great announcements. Uh, they've been responding to the community when they found out they had input lag. They, they were the first ones to fix the input lag. Uh, they've just been doing a great job responding to things, but then the other thing that really makes a big difference, uh, honestly, is that the presentation of Tekken 7 is so good now, and mm -hmm. it is such a joy to watch this game. Um, it's, it's crazy to think about you know, how much presentation makes a difference, because I'm not even going to lie, a lot of people say this, back in the older Evos, when Tekken was in top eight, that was me to go, time to go get dinner. That was for me to go sure. get lunch and stuff sure. like that. But uh, nowadays, Tekken is like that you can't miss this because, you know, the, 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 the zoom-ins on the counter hits, the slow motions at the end of the round, and just how beautiful the game looks. The music is really good. It's, everything comes together so perfectly, and, and on top of all of that, it's a really fun game to play, right? It's just it's such a good game to play. So just, oh, it's just the perfect package coming together, and it makes me happy to see it keep getting more successful because that means that their developers, the, the guys making the game, are getting rewarded for putting in all that extra effort. And so I, I, in my heart, I almost felt like I kind of wanted Tekken to close out EVO because of how hype it is and everything like that. But, you know, um, Tekken has just been on the rise, and I don't see it stopping, to be honest. James Chen, FGC historian, FGC commentator, <laughs> the legend himself joining us here on ESPN Esports. And by the way, you can catch him on Wednesday on ESPN 8, the Ocho Classic Tetris World Championships. That's right. Thank, Thank you for joining right us. Right there. Yeah, Thank no you for joining us. You can catch us. him on it, too. <laughs> <laughs> Continued coverage for esports at ESPN.com slash esports.